Welcome to the Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island. Free-flowing talk with a charismatic, down-to-earth host. Join Dean as he interviews and chats freely with his guests, ranging from superstar athletes to politicians, industry titans, and everyday folk with fascinating life stories. Dean educates, entertains, and most of all, touches people's lives. You're listening to The Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Dean Blackman Show. Boy, do we have an exciting show today. Here in my studio, here in Setauket, Long Island, New York, is Maria Cap. Maria, how are you today? I'm great. I'm so glad to finally see you in person and live. It is so special to have you come here to the studio all the way from Hollywood, from Los Angeles. You were a prior guest. Yes. If anyone wants to uh, listen to Maria's prior show, you'll see it was one of the earlier shows. It's podcasted on uh, the show's YouTube channel. And now on iTunes platform, we have it as well as podcasted on the Dean Blackman Show website. So uh, she is a born and raised Long Island gal. And she promised me that when she was back east with something really, really exciting to talk about, she'd come here in the studio and uh, and visit with us again. So uh, great to have you here. And, uh, you know, you're just uh, just remarkable that uh, you've been in the entertainment uh, business for over 20 years, as well as education. I'm going to let you, uh, after I introduce our next guest, uh, that it's just amazing, uh, your story uh, on film, uh, coaching, teaching, with all the youth that you get involved with, not only youth, but the great work you do with children, with parents. Uh, You're a remarkable lady. Why, thank you very much. And I'm so glad to be sitting right across the desk from you. You have such a bright smile in addition to your very sexy deep voice. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> so we're going to we're gonna now go across the United States. And yes. we've got another special guest that I'm meeting for the first time. Uh, my guest, everybody, is Mr. Charles Box. And he's over in Hollywood, right in the heart of L.A. Charles, how are you today? I'm um, very good. How you doing today, Dean? I'm doing terrific. Uh, nothing is better than this, Charles, to be able to do something that I love doing every day, and that is talking to people that I love to talk with and inspire, educate, motivate, have fun, a couple of laughs, and every single show that I do, I always tell my guests and my audience that if there's one person's life that we can impact from a show that we do, it's the greatest satisfaction in my life that I get. So on that note, let me just mention who Charles Box is. Charles Box is a former United States Marine, an alumnus of the 2012 Creative Minds in Cons Network and Connection. He graduated with a master's in fine arts in film and television, producing from Chapman University. Charles began producing and directing short films and music videos while in film school and continues to do so to this day. His experience as a participant in the Kames Film Festival paved the way for his contribution as a program coordinator with the Creative Mind Group in Cannes, Toronto, Berlin, and Sundance. His passion for storytelling and commitment to teamwork makes him an essential part of our team. He is currently working on his feature film debut and several other products projects in development for television. Boy, that's quite an impressive uh, introduction. Yes, and I'm very blessed and fortunate to have him part of our team, part of Capicelli's production, especially this feature that we're um, taking off with, which is Reach. We, the most important thing here today on this show and why Maria came in is they're working, Charles and uh, Maria are working on an unbelievable project they'll get into. But I think, I think before we get into the project, I think we got to go back to your first show. And my introduction of you wasn't as great and grander as uh, as it could have been, because besides you being in the entertainment business in twenty year for twenty years, and all the great things you do with education and with youth and with parents of youth, that you have three unbelievably beautiful children mm-hmm. that are all 
gifted and in the entertainment business as well. So I'm going to give you the op. I think it's very important that before you and Charles get into your unbelievable film project that you're doing, I I, I thought I want my audience to really hear the Maria Cap story. Oh, you're so sweet. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's all yours. All right. Well, I it all began with my mom, Millie, and um, I just have to say that I was raised by uh, unbelievable parents who um, uh, always thought that art was important, whether regardless of the medium, television, film, stage, museum, music. My mom is an actor who blessed Long Island stages for many, many years, and um Being a single parent and having four children, um, all under the age of 10, she would continue her art form as an actress and bring her children along with her. Mm -hmm. And so the first show that my mother was in that she brought the rest of the family, myself and my three siblings, was Carousel. And so I was on stage at 10 as one of the Snow Children. And growing up on Long Island, I graced the stages of Carriage House Players, which used to be here in Stony Brook. And Airport Playhouse was another um, second home. And um, Creative Ministries, which is now the Noel Ruiz Performing Arts Center, uh, Kids for Kids, um, Broad Hollow, etc. So really the heart of here. And what ended up happening is it just trickled down. So I raised my children. I have three children. And on Long Island, they too graced the local stages and got the acting bug. Um, So today, you know, long story short, I live in Los Angeles. Um, My eldest daughter, Rafaela, is, um, I guess, I don't know, you wouldn't call her a triple threat. You call her a quadruple threat because she writes, creates content. She's won awards for short film, um, music, music video, And she just won a jury award in a local film festival out in Los Angeles for being um, performance artist work. So um, she's an actress who's also working on her second EP and singing. And I think you'll have her on your show soon, which is really... Can't wait. I know. Can't wait. She'll talk about her her music video, Hurricane, and her single and and working with amazing Sony record producers who are Grammy nominated this year as well. So that's really exciting. And then my second is my Natasha. And Natasha is quite the interesting, unique young lady. She's a stand-up comedian who loves the classics. She loves Shakespeare. And she studies. And she just spent a summer over in London um, in the program Lambda at the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Arts. And she's actually in the process of uh, looking to pursue graduate level study at all the best schools, you know, whatever. She's auditioning. Um, As a matter of fact, I'll be in Chicago with her and up in San Francisco. And uh, she's amazing. Instead of having a musical theater portfolio book of, you know, 20 songs, she has uh, a monologue portfolio book. She's got like 13 or 14 monologues that she has memorized from Moliere, Shakespeare, prose, verse. I mean, she was just going over it. And I was like, you're blowing my mind. And yet she's the quirkiest (laughs) <laughs> cutest little voice and, and young woman um, who loves to do stand-up comedy. And the other stage in L.A. is the Groundlings. She takes classes there. Wow, wow. What a story. Yeah. And then my son, uh, Stephen, he... Um, He's well, the baby, right? Stephen? Yeah, yeah. He is the baby. Save the baby for last. Save the baby I'm for I'm the last. baby, too. You yes. Know? So Stephen Thomas, um, he just... Uh, last year, he wrapped his second feature... Um, where he's the lead. It's a a Vivica Fox film that's coming out called Fat Camp Um, that is supposed to, I think it got distribution and it should be uh, some limited theatrical release sometime in the late spring, Fat Camp. Um, Chris Redd is also the lead in that and he's um, a a brilliant comedian and storyteller. And um, so if, you know, if you do go to Laugh Factory or... Uh, improv or Second City, New York, Chicago, L.A. is predominantly his homes on on the stage for that. But he's also a television and film actor. So that's coming out. And that's really we're excited about that. And then Stephen also has had the opportunity to do some um, television shows, some of the big ones like How I Met Your Mother. He just did a bit on Teachers, which is on TV land. Uh, This year he has coming out the Adam Paley, Liam Meester television show for 20th Century Fox called Making History. He has a a co-star on that. And he just got invited back at the end of the year. He ended on a high note with a Nickelodeon show 
Uh, it's called Nikki, Ricky, Dicky, and Dawn. And it's about four Quinn tuplets is that quintuplets yes wow okay that's the storyline and he plays one of the friends doug the dozer the show's been on for many years it's a very successful um nickelodeon show and we just heard that he got invited back so he'll he'll be going back to um paramount and he's going to be working on that show again awesome. so awesome. yeah so that that's the three you kids. are you are so blessed and you know what yeah. uh even since the first show i hope your husband's uh, listening Stephen, because yes. I, it's about time i bring up him as well i haven't yeah. met him yet no but he must be quite a guy and quite he a is. husband and father so he is. Uh, your family is richly blessed yes he's our foundation our you guys rock. Are, yeah. you guys are really so steve i look forward to meeting you one day <laughs> okay and yeah. and all your children okay yes for sure so you're blessed and how about how about everything else you do i mean uh besides uh everything that you do in the entertainment business you got to share that and as well as uh is the unbelievable work you do with youth uh today yeah which will be a great lead into the film that um charles and i are working on together so if you if you yeah. want if you want to get right to that we well, could I can talk, uh, you it's, know, a, it's up to you um, so i'm an acting coach i'm a certified coach and my specialty is working with youth who are preparing for conservatory training i also work with um, all ages but predominantly youth who are either emerging or professional actors in preparation for auditions or you know getting into the business um, this weekend as a matter of fact the reason i'm in new york is that i attended for my um 10th year as a sponsor presenter and four years as a director for the new york state theater education association student conference it's called nice tea and i directed one act and i taught four classes and i brought a group of young women high school students and it's a program it's a advocacy for arts and education and it's an organization that's been around they just celebrated 20 years and it's an intense weekend for high school students to um inspire empower wow. learn and it's quite it's very energetic very exciting. it is it is it and is. i think it's it's much greater than you're even articulating i think it it's is. my it's, it's my understanding i did a little research on this that uh, there's over 800 high school students yes. from uh, new york state that are that are involved here that's a lot of uh, yes that's a lot of children yes as a matter of fact the two uh gentlemen that run this committee and this conference have been doing so i think think for 10 years but what's more interesting and is a testament to the organization and to the student conference is that they both were students wow. that attended the conference wow. themselves and they're both high school teachers that teach either art some kind of art whether it's music chorus art theater and now they run this conference for the hmm. last 10 years and they're amazing so, and it's performance. We do fundraising. Uh, Broadway Cares is part of it. Um, we have a red ribbon ceremony. There's performances. Students get to audition and be picked out of their certain classes. And Saturday night is musical theater performance in between the one act plays. And then Sunday morning at our closing ceremony is um, monologue presentations from some of the high school students. So, wow. It is. It's. I'm getting chills know, just thinking about it. I don't know how it. you do everything that you do uh, day to day, week to week, month to month, but you you get it all done. And I also, I also want to thank you very much that uh, you were the first from the entertainment business to be a guest on my show. I know, and I'm excited. And ever, ever since you, for you. ever since, thank you, ever since you appeared on my show, because of you, I've had an opportunity to meet like uh, the great publicist out in Hollywood, uh, Josh Mitchell. Yes, love him. Uh, great guy. Yes. And uh, he's referred a number of great uh, young entertainers to me. I've had uh, Cynthia Bravo has been on my show. Uh, I'm going to have uh, the young 19 year old uh, Christina Robinson's going to be this this the end of the week is going to be on my my show as well. It's been uh, I I look at uh, and your work with uh, the youth. I want you to know and for Charles to know that I'm excited about the Dean Blackman show being a platform for young generation. So. 
everyone that you come across, just like Christina Robinson, mm -hmm. uh, Cynthia Bravo, that I welcome the younger generation to please either come in studio here or by way of remote. I'd love to have them. I'd love to have all of them on, on my show in well, the you, future. You can certainly have my son on. He would like that. I want to have all your children on. Oh, you're so sweet. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, you and Charles are working on a magnificent film project. Yes. Uh, let's first bring Charles back into uh, our discussion besides his uh, impressive uh, bio that I that I uh, mentioned. Charles, is there anything else uh, about you that you want to share with uh, with my audience? Uh, yes, seems <clears throat> seems like I'm not doing enough uh, listening to Maria and everything that she does. So that's that's definitely one of the things I'm not working hard enough. <laughs> Don't um, say are you kidding me? <laughs> This guy yeah. is relentless. He should. He's going to Sundance next week <laughs> yeah. and ask him how many how many young people are you empowering in what yeah. you're doing and providing them with opportunity to to work in a film festival. You should talk about that. That's amazing because you do the same Be thing I do with just a, yeah. Before Charles speaks, yes. I want to tell Charles that when I met first of all when I when Marie and I met the first time on Skype, mm -hmm. and then and then we did a show together. And even when she came into my home today in Long Island in Setauket, and I always say if no one knows where Setauket is, it's about 65 miles east of Manhattan, New York City. It's on the okay. north shore of Long Island. And uh, most people don't know what Setauket is. Setauket's in between towns that they heard of, towns like uh, Stony Brook and or Port Smithtown. Jefferson, Smithtown, Oldfield, uh, towns like that. So that's where Setauket is. So uh, when Maria came through the door here, we spoke so, so much before we got into the studio. What's unique about my show is uh, there's no set time for this platform. If Maria is capable, Charles, of doing a 10-hour show with me here today. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see about so that. Is, before we get into the great project that you and Maria are cl collaborating on, is there anything about you, uh, your background and, and your involvement in entertainment and, and film that you'd like to share with my audience? Yes. Uh, you know, like you said, uh, I, I did spend some time in the Marine Corps, which I, I loved uh, and I appreciated uh, the years I honorably served there. Uh, you know, and the Marine Corps was fulfilling in one aspect of your life. I mean, you, you figure you only have so much time, so uh, you want to do as much as possible and make, you, make as big of an impact while you're here. Um, and I believe I did that in the Corps. Um, and then I, you know, left the Marine Corps and, and had an opportunity to attend college, and I did, in film school. And, you know, it was great, uh, but still, it, it, it's always you strive to 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 do things and do great things and but you always strive to give back uh while you're doing those things as well especially while you're youthful and uh, have the energy and um you know having a son i had one son uh which again like i say you know maria does a lot uh i i had one so she's triple what i'm doing um but uh with my son i was able to you know bring him get him to a point where he started school and you know, one just seemed like it wasn't enough for me. So which is why I started working with the Creative Mind Group uh, to and again, empower the next generation of filmmakers to give back to them. Annually, we take approximately, you know, 400 to 450 filmmakers to the film festivals, you know, from Cannes to Berlin, you know, to Sundance to Toronto and American film market. So it's it's a really, really great opportunity for them to learn, to get under our wing, having experience, uh, and steering them the right way, giving them the guidance they need through a, a, you know, bona fide program that, uh, you know, gives them a great foundation. So I, I enjoy it. Uh, as much as I love to work in the industry and work on my projects, I love to give back to them and, and watch them, uh, grow as well in the industry. Well, so this creative mind, this is global young a global young filmmaker all over the world is that uh is is that basically you or 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 what creative mind is all about um i think it's i think it's both um you know i look at youth as being you know you're only as old or as young as you feel so i i don't i definitely don't feel uh i still feel like i'm a youth so uh the difference is the experience, though, that I believe I bring. Um, but yes, it is global. It is uh, young filmmakers, whether it's young at heart or young 
age. Uh, but at the same time, it, it, it does do that. We do go all over the world. It is a global program. And uh, again, I think that's the program and myself. You know, I'm I'm very proud uh, that both of you, it's very special that I have two guests besides all the great stuff that you guys do with uh, film. But just think of how much time we're spending on the work that you do with youth. Um, I mean, it must be, you know, listen, there's kids growing up, whether it be sports or it be entertainment, um, the level of pressures uh, on on these uh, on these children uh, yeah. must be enormous at uh, different levels. Uh, do you do Maria, do you want to share something on that? Yeah, I mean, I think so. Interesting. One of the workshops that I have presented at the nice tea conference, it's called free to be me. And what I do is I talk about, I bring, it's only 90 minutes and what could you possibly do? But I, I, what you just said is so true. What comes out of the students as a result of this workshop that I do, and I typically do it on the last morning. So the kids have had this intensive weekend and then it's this last morning. And I've had as much as 75 high school students in this workshop and as little as 10. But this last year I had 25 students and what we, to talk to your point, what comes out of this workshop that I do always is the kids feel like puppets, strings are being pulled, they feel like they have a noose around their neck, the pressure is enormous, whether it's academic pressure, family pressure, it's basically expectations that are placed on them to achieve or fit a mold. Um, there's also, and this comes from this workshop that I do, the kids open up and share. And it is something they, they're hugging me at the end of the 90 minutes. And I've had kids repeat this workshop. But again, it speaks to the point of what you're saying about the pressure. I think even after high school, college, and like Charles is saying, young at heart, it's typically younger people. But, you know, people who are young at heart who are emerging in this film business, there's also like anything, there's pressure anywhere. But that is, I think, what drew me to wanting to work with Charles when I first met him was also via phone, Skype, Facebook, and then, you know, working together now in right. person. But it's the, um, I think the value that it is important to pay it forward and the value of understanding the pressures that one faces. And that at the end of the day, nothing matters other than understanding and empathy and love and being happy. Wow, wow. And, you know, I mean, I think I have clarity right now on that because I just came off this weekend. I just gave that workshop and, you know, just like revamping up in terms of why I wrote the script I wrote, why I wrote it and co-wrote it with the young man, Johnny James Fiore, who I directed two years ago in the play Dog Sees God, which, you know, this is like backstory that you might remember. Mm. But it, it's all full circle. And I know that's why Charles is committed to this project as well, is because it resonates with him. He has a young son who's of that age transitioning from adolescence, high school into adulthood. And it's unknown and uncertain and um, forming that identity of who you are and how do I fit into the world. You know, you and I are blessed. Charles, I believe. Yeah, Charles is blessed, too. He has amazing parents like you and mm. I had. But not everybody has that foundation. Right, right. And so if you say, like you said, you want it, you get great satisfaction knowing if there's one person that you touch after each show that listens and says, wow, I never thought of it that way. Or there's hope or, you know, whatever that is. I mean, that's what it's all about. I know that's what it's all about for me, why I do what I do. And I know that that's what I'm... Uh, attracted to in terms of you and even talking to Charles, you know, he's very, very committed and passionate about well, making a difference. I know, I know with uh, so many children that you touch uh, that I, I, I look at it being related to what I see, you know, with my own children growing up, what I saw on the sports fields. And I wasn't that exposed to the entertainment so much with children as my children were growing up it was more sports mm -hmm. and i saw the pressures that were put on kids with sports and when you relate it to if you look at just our 
uh, North American sports leagues, whether you look at the NBA, the NFL, mm-hmm. um, you know, you look at uh, Major League Baseball, you look at all our uh, all the sports leagues uh, that we have um, that, uh, you know, everybody, uh, everybody can't make it to, to the NHL, to hockey, to Major League Baseball, to the big uh, professional level. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would assume that there's so much pressure put on these kids. Um, what's how many just like sports, it's almost like hitting a lottery because you not only do you have to be so good at what you're doing. There are so many great athletes that are competing against each other. You've got to be lucky with not to have injuries. You got to be just have luck on your side because in sports, there's so many great players that are young youth that are overlooked. Your yours and Charles with all these children. What's it like with uh, with being in the entertainment business and children? You know, how many out of you know out of a million kids, how many make it? Well, when you say make it, what do you mean? So I'll rhetorically, I'll say, make it on camera, become Jennifer Aniston, become Matt LeBlanc, become um, One Direction, become Justin Bieber, become uh, what's the new young girl, it girl, Haley Seinfeld, you know, or or Justin J- Jessica Chastain or Amy Adams. Like these are names that are recognizable household names, right? Brands. Those are brands. That's right. But there are so many other people that are working in this business, not only just earning a regular living per se, but earning a fabulous living. And then, of course, there are people that are emerging and struggling. Hmm. But it's not, in my opinion and in my experience, it's not you're struggling because you're disenchanted. You've lost sight of what it is you want. Um Certainly to aspire to be famous, to be Michael Jordan or, you know, the brand against hockey or, you know, football, like those are one in a million, right? But there's a troop and a collaborative army of people that are necessary to Amy Adams being the lead in Arrival. Mm. There's other actors. There's for all the actors you see. There's ten times as many people behind the scenes. I mean, just sit now. For the last two years, all I do is sit and watch the rolling credits of a film. I make sure I read the playbill of a play. I want to know everybody, not just the actors that I'm looking on the face, but who designed the costumes, who's doing the lighting design, who's in charge of the sound. You know, for film... There's so many people that are involved. Absolutely. My son goes to school with a young boy and his dad won the Academy Award for sound design for Mad Max. Hmm. Someone listening to this may not even realize or have taken the thought beyond being Tom Hardy, the actor, to, wow, I could actually... You know, it's people earn a living, very great living, and it's extremely rewarding and creative to work in a technical capacity and in other capacities. So the pressure is on, but it's being aware and knowing that everybody's journey is different. Not everybody is going to be Amy Adams or, um, you know, a Justin Bieber, but that you certainly can aspire to be in the business and have your dreams fulfilled and 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 enjoy the business and earn a living Hmm. let's go over to charles Uh, do you have anything to add or want to comment on on what maria's uh spoken about on this conversation yes i i I think everything maria said is great and um again just to add to to all the great things that she said um as far as making it um and that you spoke of you know um Making it, like she said, has different levels of making it and, and the pressure that these um, young people have to, to be that overnight success, like, say, a Justin Bieber who, you know, gets 10 million hits and he's a o- seemingly overnight success. Um, you know, what we do as far as workshops uh, on a regular basis per, festi- per festival is attempt to let them know that you don't have this doesn't have to be it for you today. They come to the festival, they'll have a great time, they'll meet a lot of great people, but sometimes that process, again, depending on your journey and your path, may take a bit longer to get to. 
just because of whatever, you know, things that they have. Uh, some people may strive to be the best director, uh, you know, or best, you know, actor in their craft. And, you know, their journey just takes them differently. Hmm. Uh, but with that, uh, we do create a network of peers with these festivals. That's almost like a family type atmosphere that helps, you know, hold one another up when they need it. Because sometimes the pressure does get to them and, you know, they may want to leave or, or change path or is this good for me? It affects like it's probably affected a lot of people uh, in this industry. But that network that we have and then you have us, uh, myself and the other people in the company as mentors, we definitely help them and continue to give them uh, the, the right guidance, I believe, to keep going. Because sometimes it's just as easy as a, a half hour to an hour phone call, having them reshift their focus. You know, do, am I going to be Justin Bieber today? No. But if you keep striving and keep doing your best, then you'll be the best who you are. Uh, and, and again, your path may not be music. It may be an engineer in music and just helping them focus on that. And, and I think that's good uh, to do that. Excellent. Uh, Maria, do you have something else that you want to add to what Charles uh, just spoke about? Yeah, he's talking about the festivals. And, and just to clarify, he can maybe explain a little bit about the festivals so young people or whomever's listening can, can learn from what he, what he means when he references uh, Sundance in Toronto and these festivals and what the festivals are for and why people come together. But what I wanted to do is talk about a young man, Damien Chazelle, which is like the hottest thing right now. He's a yeah. writer, director. He's also a musician. Um, I had the good fortune of working and getting to know his sister. They're both out in L.A. But Damien Chazelle is the epitome. He might be the Justin Bieber of song to comparison to song. Damien Chazelle right now is the hot guy wow. in film. He um, had the successful hit Whiplash, which is the feature film that won. Um, I think it's a uh, is it's. R.K. Simmons, what's his name? Roland Simmons, I don't know. The actor who played the lead teacher won an Academy Award for his role. And I think um, Whiplash, if I'm not mistaken, may have won for original screenplay. But mm -hmm. from that success, he is now known. Did you get to see La La Land? Uh, no, I have not. Please put uh, it on your I'm list. I'm being honest with you. That's I have okay. not seen it yet, but I heard it's terrific. It is. Damien Chazelle is the writer-director of that as well. And that comes off of his success in Whiplash. So he's an example of those people that are in the business that look at directors. And I mean, and there's many, many brilliant, like Scorsese has the movie Silence and he's a, a career that's amazing. But Damien Chazelle's the new up and coming, you think overnight success kid on the block. Wow. Um, but he came up through the festival circuit. He, I think he originally wrote the screenplay for Cloverfield, which is a horror genre. Wow. Whiplash is nothing like that. And La La Land is nothing like that. Mm. And when you, he won, what award show did we just have? Was it the Golden Globes? Golden Globes we have. So he won for La La Land. Emma Stone won. Ryan Gosling won. I believe the composer of La La Land for original score won. But when Damien got up, he got up and thanked his parents in New Jersey and his sister Anna. And, you you know, oh, I sounded very New York there. Sister. Sister Anna. Um, and just I, I've never met him, but a humble, regular young guy who went to college, grew up, had a dream, wanted to make movies. And, you know, he I, wherever his path took him now in his young 30s, he's having his quote unquote overnight success wow what a great story i think so I what just a great wanted, that's a yeah. great that's a great story there's so that's many pretty special there's so many that's very special you know you asked me if i saw la la land uh you know for since july my mm. my life is my life is consumed uh, with uh this uh with the radio show i think we might have uh i think we might have lost charles uh, oh I, it's very possible yeah i no. would love to, oh, no we yeah. didn't oh i thought no, maybe okay. we i thought maybe we might have lost you i no, thought there good. was a tactical problem i there. don't i want him to explain distribution yeah. and the film and the markets and so forth and so on so but uh you know i haven't had a chance but i know in the future uh, because of all these great new relationships you and josh and some of the people being on my show, uh, Christina and Cynthia, that uh, I definitely one day have got to bring the Dean Blackman show out to uh, L.A. and Hollywood and and maybe do some things on the coast there. That would be fun. And Cheryl that Chase would, was going to be with be, us. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, we one were gonna, we were going to have Angelica from the Rugrats. Wow, because she's involved be with this cool. film. She would love to do it. She, that would that yeah. would be super. So listen, let's. Uh, I'm really excited about the project 
that both you and Charles are collaborating. And, yes. and make sure you correct me if I say something not accurate here. But uh, this great project that you guys, this new feature film that you're working on, Maria, it's my understanding that uh, you co-wrote yes. uh, the project um, and uh, producing and directing this new feature film is called Reach. Yes. And that this script has just been selected and awarded the best screenplay by the Hollywood and Vine Film Festival. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, when we're done, I'll give you a, I'll give you a good hug and, okay. and a kiss. But that's very impressive. <laughs> yeah. That's I, really cool. What an accomplishment. Thank you. Charles, very cool. Yes, yes, I agree. Congratulations. Cool. Congratulations and mazel tov. <laughs> okay. So the yes. co-writers are, are two young men. Johnny James Fiore, I met two years ago when I directed him. He was the lead in the play Dog Sees God, Confessions of a Teenage Blockhead, which was my... Los Angeles directorial debut. We put up the play um, in Santa Monica. We were fortunate enough to have the playwright join us, Bert uh, Royal, who is most known for the screenplay Easy A. And um, we did a red carpet event and we brought and created awareness through the Trevor Project, which again, I'm all about anything that, like you said, touching somebody's life, creating awareness. Dog Sees God, was about a group of high school kids. It explored the themes of bullying, uh, suicide, promiscuity, um, victimization, bystander, and just it looked at what happened to a group of kids who were friends in elementary school, what goes on during middle school that then changes and impacts them and, and how they end up in high school and treat each other, sometimes very poorly. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, and sexual identity was also questioned in this. So from that experience, what happened was Johnny shared a story as we were developing character to get to the heart of his character. And he was honest and open and said, you know, not only have I bullied, but I've been bullied. And in my senior year, he said, I had an aha moment and I, desi I decided instead of to make a difference in even my ending my high school career. And he quickly, the story went like this young boy that he knew was being victimized and bullied. And at some point he even bullied him early on and more was a bystander in recent years where he just watched it and let it happen during a pep rally, saw the kid sitting alone, uh, knew that the kid loved Michael Jackson, by the way, saw him sitting alone, um, and seemed sullen and just got out of being picked on. And Johnny went over to him and say, hey, you know, would you like to get up on stage with me and the other kids? We're putting on a tribute to Michael Jackson or dance or something. The kid's face lit up. And short story short, from that moment on, this kid and Johnny were friends and Johnny kind of looked out for him. And similarly, in the story, the play that I directed, Johnny's role played the same kind of character and had the same kind of synergy with another character in the wow. story. Wow. However, in the story, the play, the ending is more tragic in that the young man ends up taking his life. Hmm. So then we examine how that impacts and affects the survivors. But in real life, the happy ending is that this young man in Johnny's real life in high school that he invited up on stage to dance at the graduation ceremony at the end of the school year, he pulled Johnny to the side and told Johnny, I just want to let you know, you remember that night at the pep rally? Well, I was going to go home that night and kill myself. Wow. And you were nice to me hmm. and gave me hope and included me. And I just want to say thank you. Wow. That's something, Maria. Well, that you almost have tears in your eyes. I know because huh? that's why we wrote this. You know, you're story. Un you're unbelievable how uh, you are really committed, Maria Cap. And I've got to say, you know, Charles is on the on the on the coast. It's uh, he's on remote here. It's not like he's uh, face to face with me in the studio here. But uh, you had tears in your eyes, and uh, you're really special. That uh, as a producer, uh, you are unbelievably committed to really creating entertainment uh, that really inspires and compels uh, social change. You're, uh, I mean, you, you, uh, it, it was like a movie here. You. <laughs> 
I mean, you were, uh, you, you had me. You were, uh, you were, I was, un- and it was real. Well, you know? I'm, I am being authentic, although I am a trained actress. But no, it was. But that's authentic. what my show is all about. It's it, about full transparency and keeping it real. And mm. that's what. That's what you did here. And, uh, you know, even when I met you, when we did our first show together, it's unbelievable how all your work and day to day and as a producer on this project, uh, how you're committed to creating entertainment that just inspires and compels social change. And it's beautiful. It's Thank really... you. The script is entertaining. It's a dramedy. We have lots of twists and turns. Um, I, I, I'm not, I don't want to speak for you, Charles, but I, I can say well, that Charles is a single parent, right? When you he, are done, I will, yes, I will send it over to, him, to Charles on the, on the coast. Interestingly enough, I wrote a story, uh, again with Johnny and then he had a writing partner. So there's actually three writers. Um, Grant Harling is the other young man who, um, is involved with this. And I'm going to say this as well. Not only am I an advocate for young people, you know, high school and I do all this stuff, but I'm also an advocate for young emerging professionals that are, that have left their homes and moved to La La Land, which is Los Angeles, Hollywood, to pursue their dreams. So any opportunity that I can give back and create for them as well, I'm definitely, that's, uh, that I, I look to incorporate that always. I mean, that's why I directed the I play think you're, years ago. I think you're being very humble. I let, let me tell you something. In the short time that I know Maria Cap, listen, all your work that I've looked at, and even even the qualities and specialness of your children, I mean, every single, all your projects are all about empowering. They're all about inspiring, creating awareness to the very things that matter and that are simple. I mean, being kind, loving, and aware of one's actions. I mean, all your work has been that. You're going to make me cry listening to it. <laughs> oh, my gosh, Charles. Is he talking about me? You, why don't we go over to uh, Charles over there in Hollywood in L.A. and see what else he wants to add uh, to this conversation that we have. Uh, Charles, it's all yours. Yes, I I, I mean, again, I, I think Maria brought the passion that definitely ignited uh, and sparked something in me to be a part of it as well. Uh, like she was beginning to tell you, I am a single father. And with my son, you know, some of these pressures, uh, you know, I've had to deal with single handedly with this. So when you see something that resonates real life so much, it makes you want to, you know, bring that to screen because you never know who may who else may look at that and feel the exact same way. Like I felt like that I, I needed this or, you know, I spent two hours watching this movie. It really helped me to, you know, um, have hope myself and that's part of what we do in this industry is is look to genuinely instill hope into people and um i mean you you guys said so many great things and and, you know maria with with uh just speaking of you know the director for la la land which interesting enough i don't know if she knew this i was actually there at sundance the film festival when his film won and i was actually working with the company that actually sold the international rights to his film uh, his film went from a short film to uh, Whiplash and then won. And then he, here he comes out with this amazing film, La La Land. I you know, was fortunate enough to see them both uh, at the festivals. And just the people's response to these projects. I mean, it, it just it's nothing like seeing it the first time and knowing that this is going to be amazing. And again, seeing that back in September to now, I mean, it deserves all the praise that it gets because, again, it 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 does those things that that reach does and you know that we're striving to do again it's it's putting hope and love and all those things that you want to to show people and uh, have them escape for that moment and and understand it'll be all right so but yes but i'm 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 fortunate i'm thankful to be a part of the project uh on the business side i'll, I'll just tell you with the festivals the objective what we look to do is is take this project to the festival so it can in a sense get legs so it can you know which is stand on its own for people to look at and uh, to spread uh, by word of mouth, in a sense. And and that's what festivals, in a sense, do. In addition to getting distribution for those projects, uh, I've been a part of the company for about six years, the Creative Mind Group, and have built these contacts and relationships with, you know, these major distribution companies. And this project was the perfect project uh, for us to get and to utilize those contacts. 
uh, even though I, although I've had my own projects and worked on other projects, this one was just that one project in particular. Like this is it. This is this is our project to take to the festivals because it's relevant. Uh, most, if not all, children that have been teenagers have been through high school or have at some point or another wanted to fit in. And have needed hope, whether they've had a great family life or or not. There was something that they were lacking, um, and and they needed that. So I think this project does that on on so many levels, and uh, that's what we look to do at the festival. We look to take it to find a distributor to get it out, so we can get as many people as we can to see this project. And so that's that's uh, again the passion that Maria has for it. She's the nucleus of this project. She put everybody together. I I believe that's what's keeping all of us going is we love the project and we are, you know, working well with one another. So listen, I've given Maria a lot of accolades and this is the first time Charles I'm meeting you and uh, your passion comes through very strong. And uh, you uh, besides uh, unbelievable creative talents, uh, you uh, sound like uh, quite a, a, a great guy and with a tremendous heart. And uh, I I can't thank you enough for uh, taking the time out to be on the show. And my audience, I know, uh, loves hearing all this. So uh, thank you. Uh, I really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you, sir. And I appreciate your time. Thank you. So what let's let's take what's the next step uh, with uh, with this uh, new feature film project, uh, Reach Maria? What is uh, what is the next step uh, with Reach? I don't want Charles to go away yet. I know, Charles, you might have to run, but if you can hang in there a little longer, so if I forget anything, you can help out. Um, So, you know, it's come full circle. This has been a project that's been in development and writing. Um, Johnny and Grant and I have workshopped it. We've had readings. Actually, Christina Robinson is one of the young ladies that sat in my living room and, you know, helped us bring some of the characters to life as well. Um, who'll be your guest? Yeah, this Friday. Yeah. Christina Robinson. Can't so, wait. Um, and uh, where we're at now, and again, it, it's come full circle. I tried to, att- you know, we had a budget that was very high, and I went to Sundance and I went to AFM and learned about what I needed to do in terms of attract financing and get names attached and like this whole formula about how to make and how to produce a film. So at the end of the day, where it's really come down to is this is my first feature film project. So, and it is my baby. And in order to make it and make it right, I'm not I'm not able to give it away where someone else will come and and change it. Wow. And I almost did do that. I had a, a extremely smart, energetic, experienced um, a writer that I sought out who was also a director, a t- almost attached. And then I just I needed to part ways because it lost the sight of what was really important to me and the story that we wanted to tell. Mm. So at the end of the day, we are pulled it back. We're looking at who's in the community that we know, meaning, you know, myself, Johnny Grant. I live in L.A. I lived there four years. You have a network of resources that are the best of the best mm. from all over the world, from production, from crew, location, the business of how things work and talent. So we chose and made commitments to shooting it locally in L.A., And we also trimmed back the budget and we're really looking and to attract people who want, who are as passionate as I and as passionate as Charles and are willing to work on a low budget feature film. And what does that mean for anyone that's listening and even to educate you? SAG, the union that governs making um, legitimate projects, it's a, a contract and it's a level and a tier and it's called a SAG Ultra low budget tier and it's a budget of $250,000. We're not looking for tax credits or incentives. We're keeping it local. We're tapping more into people's hearts and willingness to be involved in a passion project that resonates with them and lend their talents. Obviously, people have to be paid, but our predominant costs are going to be the main location, which is that we will have to rent a high school. Hmm. Majority of the film probably um, 
half of the days of shooting will take place at the school and we do have to pay for that. I mean, there's no, you know, way around that. So where we're at now, it's considered pre-development or pre-production. Um, and that is that we've developed the product project. We know what our budget is. We know who the key players are. We do have talent that is interested, you know, versus like attached. But we have commitments from people that have expressed interest to work on our project and no, they're not the Jennifer Aniston's and the Brad Pitt's and the Justin Bieber's and, you know, um, the Ryan Gosling's of the world. I would assume they don't have to be. They uh, don't. That there's some great, there great is. That's right. unbelievable talent that's out there. Uh, and I want to give them the opportunity to work. That's another thing. Uh, you know, it's like you can give it to anyone. You can hold auditions. You can contact, you know, WME or CAA or a top agency to pull that young hip emerging um, actor who may bring that's what it's about a talent who's going to bring dollars to the because Charles as he talked about distribution you take that name talent and who's that name and what's their value in the markets that you're going to sell the film to but where I'm at now you ask where's the project amazing gifted talented actors who are on top of their game and hungry to work and tell an important story. That's where we are. And that, at this budget point, mitigates the risk and creates an opportunity for higher return. So hopefully the story and the moving performances will stand on the feet to create that energy. And there's groups that we're going to be aligning with. Yeah. So when I hear you talk about this, uh, what comes to mind is this is a low budget movie. I think what the budget's about $250,000. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a great opportunity for um, parents to really invest in in children that have tremendous uh, passion to be in the arts, to be actors and actresses, and to participate, uh, for parents to participate, even uh, not just for their children to act, but maybe uh, maybe to possibly even invest in, uh, in, in, in the project. Well, I wouldn't say parents, I, I wouldn't say exactly that, but it, it, to act, but I would say that Someone who's also an advocate or someone who's, you know, looking to invest because this rings true to them, this story, they feel that this is an important message, anti-bully, anti-suicide, anti-drug, pay it forward, you know, kindness, one small gesture can change someone's life forever. Like that resonates. Whatever, whatever, mm -hmm. the, whatever the case is, yeah. what, we're, what we're talking about on this great platform of my show is that you've, you've come up with a great screenplay. That's already been acclaimed with some screenplay awards in Hollywood and Vine Film Festival. That here is a great opportunity and a message that I'm putting out there that uh, aspiring and some very talented uh, actors and actresses have an opportunity to participate in this unbelievable film project. Yes, when we go back to L.A., we will be starting some casting. Th some of the roles are cast and we do that's what i was saying we have some talent that has expressed interest like i have dan loria who's most known for the wonder years but he was just on the television show pitch mm -hmm. and he's a, a an amazing um stage actor he is interested in playing he's just like let me know when funding's in place and where to show up and he loved the script uh he's also a fellow long islander maybe we can get what? him for your show dan that loria great. he's a linden her that sky. would be super. You guys would hit it off great. That would be great. Yeah. And then I had mentioned my friend um, Cheryl Chase, who was going to join us today. She's the voice of Angelica from the Rugrats. They're celebrating their 25th year anniversary and they're coming out with a new show. They're revamping it. So she's excited for her. Kudos. Yeah. But this is an opportunity for her too. There's some things in this piece that resonate with her and the opportunity to be part of it. So. Wow. Um, I'm looking at some people that I've mentioned already, but that, you know, there's a, an amazing comedian, Dan Marino, that's out there. I mean, these aren't people that I've promised roles for, but these are people that have come to my home and they've helped us Wonderful. develop it and workshop awesome. and they're out there, you know, doing it. Um, 
I'm trying to think of who else we have. Oh, I have an amazing talent, which again, you were saying before, pressure to be. Here's an example of another guy that no one's going to know his name, but his credits and IMDb, you know, portfolio is amazing. Anthony Brandon Wong, I met him at Ivana Chubbuck. Uh, four years ago when we were both going through the certification to teach program. But he is a character actor who has worked with A-list talent in big budget films, The Matrix. Wow. And I mean, Nicole Kidman and Clive Owen. I mean, his resume is expansive. Great. He's in Australia and he's on a television show that just got picked up for a second year called Family Law. And um, this resonated with him. Now I have to get the money to pay him to get me in it, you know? <laughs> so he's like my, he's he's someone that I would love to work with. He's such a great spirit and human being. Um, shout out to Anthony. We're trying to figure out how to pay you. <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, I think I answered why the don't question. We, why don't we go back over to Charles and see if uh, he has more that he wants to add to this? But you know what, Charles, maybe you could talk about the the legs of what makes, uh, like I'm talking about where we're at in pre-development, pre-production, and, you know, like what makes it stand on its ground and what'll make a, a buyer want to buy this and then sell it, distribute it to the world, which would help us. Yeah. I, I think, Maria Cap. before Charles does that, I think I got to make you an offer that you got to start coming uh, back to the East Coast once in a while and co-anchoring some shows here with me. That was good how you did that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that that's part of being in the entertainment business and what you do, right? You did that very yeah. well, Maria Cap. My thank you, Mr. But let's go. I, I hope I didn't throw Charles off. Uh, Charles, go ahead. No, no, absolutely. I, I, I love hearing the conversation. You two definitely have great chemistry. Um, yes. So uh, as far as what makes, you know, it's a great story, first and foremost. Um, like Maria said, uh, the tier that we are on with, with the psych ultra low budget definitely puts us in a different place than your, uh, you know, quoted A-list actors. But a good story does have a home. Uh, there are many distribution models and a well put together story that looks really, really good will will find a place in, in the market to go and to create revenue. Uh, that's what will get the project sold. Uh, well put together you know, um, the aesthetics are good, solid acting. And again, of course, the, the, the number one thing is a great story. Uh, and we'll get a sales agent once we go to the festivals that'll, you know, reach out and send it to the places that it'll ultimately live and um, look to create the revenue that we need to bring back. That's that's, you know, ultimately at this point, we want to make a great film, bring it in on time. Uh, as far as the scheduled time we have and under budget and then, you know, get it to the, the people that we need to and uh, look to recoup some of the, some of those investors uh, funds back. So I think, you know, uh, that's that's it in a nutshell without going into too much, you know, boring stuff as far as the business and the numbers and things like that. But I, I think the project will will do well and sell itself in those markets. Well, it sounds extremely exciting and uh, I can't wait to see it one day. Yeah, okay. it seems really exciting. So, listen, I think it's important for both of you, uh, starting with Maria, that uh, if the audience wants to get in touch with each one of you, why don't you, uh, why don't you start, Maria, with how uh, how everyone can get in touch with you? Well, first, I want I I don't know if we really even talked about the film itself. Do you want to hear like what it's about or? If you, you, you've got the floor, go ahead and cover that. <laughs> I mean, just specifically, it's about a high school um, boy. His name is Steven. I didn't think that you'd want to give out no, the secret well, here on you it, know, but you can is, go ahead yeah, and do it. Yeah, this is called the log line. You know, this okay. is like the elevator pitch we okay. do. But it's about a young high school senior that on his first day of school, uh, he's been um, uh, titillating with a, an on-site uh, suicide, pro-suicide group. And on his first first day of his senior year of high school, he's made a commitment that he's going to um, commit suicide. Mm. So suicidal ideations, there's a backstory, whatnot, but this is what he decides. And what happens is on his first day of school, the new kid shows up and comes to his defense. Again, similar to what I shared about Johnny James Fiore and that story of one small gesture can change the life, someone's life forever. So that the new kid comes to school and um, creates a, 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 um, a synergy between Stephen and basically delays the act that he's going to do when he goes home that evening. And as their friendship ensues, um, they 
uh, form an inseparable bond and mm-hmm. they we carry through high school. What parallels this is that there is a particular young man, Nick, who is the bully. There's some stereotypical things that we're doing for just explanation of story, but Nick's power um, changes and shifts. This new kid, Clarence, just changes. He's a catalyst, and he just changes the whole dynamic of the typical cliques in the high school. And Stephen, with his new um, rise of confidence and reason to live and having purpose and friendships and whatnot, Nick's life and status in the school, we see is on the demise. It just goes in the opposite direction. And then we have this subplot where we get to examine the home life of the boys and why, what's going on there and what had precipitated and perhaps put these kids in this position to begin with. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, the story does have... Um, yeah, fortunately, unfortunately, we were laughing, we're crying, and the ending of the story is really, you know, what happens? It's very interesting, and I even want to know what happens to Nick, what's going on with his relationship with him and his dad, why is he the way he is, why does he bring it to school and treats others the way he does, and then what happens to Stephen? Does he go for it and you know um does he go on to college what happens to claire i mean it's just it's a bunch of that kind wow. of stuff wow you know we have some girls in there of course and we have some drinking and you know typical stuff but at the end of the day it's really all about um advocating for being kind amazing amazing it's uh, charles do you have anything that else that you want to add about uh, about the movie just looking forward to getting the cameras rolling and uh, getting this in the can and, uh, you know, putting it in the audience for uh, for people to see. It was a pleasure uh, being here and I appreciate it. Thank you. You bet. Uh, I think it is important once again to go back to, uh, how, to how, how the audience can contact you. Why don't we start with Maria? I think the best uh, way would be you could always find us on IMDb, Charles Box, Maria Cap, But you can go to my website, which is Cappuccielli. Um, productions or cappuccelli.com. Um, also, you can Google my name, Maria Cap, and my email comes up, my cell phone comes up. And I do have a Facebook page for the documentary film that you and I spoke about last time, which is a parallel uh, project that also supports a lot of these same themes and examines um, identity formation in young people. Um, but I have a Facebook page called Find and identity and that project hmm. is in post-production and i'm wrapping up and it'll be going out there so that's another way that you can find me is on facebook through find an identity wow charles do you have anything else that you want to add to uh, how people can contact you as well yeah uh, like maria said i think the one of the easiest ways is imdb but uh my email address also i, I can give that as a uh, c as in charles b-o-x-j-r uh, at gmail.com. Uh, that's probably the quickest way those two, uh, you know, just with the festival, a lot of phone calls, a lot of text. So send an email and within, you know, 12 to 24, you will have a response from me. It's not a phone call, but, uh, that way we can keep it, uh, you know, just with the, the large amount of traveling that I do it sometimes. So yeah, those two ways. And, uh, you know, I welcome any project that's, uh, you know, viable and that, you know, people think, uh, can do just as Reach will do. Well, I just want to say my guests today are Maria Cap and Charles Box, and you guys are a class act, and uh, I wish you uh, nothing but much success, a happy and healthy new year to both of you. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you one thing. I think the outcome of this show is I think we're going to touch a lot more than one person. Thank I you. think you, uh, both of you, are uh, incredibly talented people that have a heart of passion, and uh, and uh, I think uh, you every day uh, inspire and educate, uh, as well as motivate uh, a lot of adults and children. And uh, I'm very proud and humbled to to have you as my you Maria back again and Charles for a first time and hope there's many more times after this. And, uh, I do have to say like you've been doing, please spread the word. I think the best platform and place to be 
in the country right now in the world is to come on the Dean Blackman show <laughs> and tell right. your story and uh, and have yeah. some fun and keep it real and uh, and let's have some fun. Well, we'll so. come back and tell you how it does when it's wrapped and, and we're in the festival and distribution and where they can buy it or watch it. You bet. And I hope we're going to come back again. And both you and Charles, we're going to talk about it again. Absolutely. So on that Absolutely. note, thank you very much. I want to thank all our listeners for being here with us today on the Dean Blackman Show. Please don't forget to like us on Facebook. Uh, subscribe to the show's YouTube channel. Please make whatever comments in the YouTube section that you want to make. I just want to let you know that this show as well as all previous shows, including Maria's uh, prior show, can be found on the iTunes platform, Podcasted, also on the website as well. So from all of us uh, here at the Dean Blackman Show, everybody have a great day. You've been listening to the Dean Blackman Show live from Long Island, New York. From all of us here, we'd like to thank you for tuning in. We look forward to hearing your comments via Facebook, Twitter, Skype, and email. And don't forget, you can visit the webpage anytime for the up-and-coming guest list. From all of us here, have a good evening.